This video is a basic run through of what we'll be doing in class. Uh, we're going to be using a program called SketchUp to do some of our work with geometric transformations. Now this video is specifically focused on doing translations. Uh, translations in layman's terms just means to take an object and to slide it. Okay, but we're going to do it this way because one, you can see how people will apply this. SketchUp is a, uh, a 3D uh, computer-aided design program, so engineers, architects, designers use these types of programs when uh, applying the mathematics that we're going to be doing. All right, so your job is to just listen. You don't need to take notes. You don't need to write anything down. This is just to get familiar with SketchUp so that when we get to class and you go through these instructions, uh, again, that it will be a little bit more familiar. All right. Okay, so first thing you're going to do is you're going to look for an icon like this. I'm on a Mac, but I'm going to give instructions for PC. And the SketchUp icons, this little red icon, looks like a set of stairs. You'll open it up, you'll get a screen that looks similar to this one. Now, sometimes people use this for particular reasons. So if there's something pre-made on your screen, like you can see mine, what I've got is this is a file for a 3D printing. And so this is the space that you can fit inside a MakerBot printer. Okay, and it's to keep you from going beyond the size of the printer. Okay, but we're just going to select it. Notice how it's highlighted in blue, and we're going to delete it. All right, next thing you're going to do is I want, we want everyone's projects to be consistently in the same units, specifically millimeters. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to go to the window menu. You're going to go down to model info. And then under format, you want to make sure it's set to decimals and millimeters. Okay, that way all our work is going to be spit out or entered in as millimeters. Okay, close that out. All right, now here's the part that's really important. The program we're using, SketchUp, like I said, is a 3D design program. So if I were to actually pan around here, there's the horizon. You can actually see we are in three dimensions where I've got an x-axis, a y-axis, and this line shooting up is the z-axis. And so it allows us to do things in 3D and not just two dimensions. But for what we want, our initial work is only going to be in two dimensions. So to keep it a little less confusing, we're going to ignore the fact that there is a z-axis here, and we're going to pretend like it's a two-dimensional program. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to set this to a top view, like uh, looking down from an airplane. And what you're going to do for that is you're going to do Shift-2. So what Shift-2 does, it gives you the top view looking down at this gray stuff, which is just basically the ground. Okay, and again, if I pan... You can see there's the ground and then the sky and the horizon line. But by switching, what it's doing is it's just giving us that top view. Okay, so you're going to use that key a lot. Shift 2. All right. So now we've got the red line as our x-axis. The green line is our y-axis. And of course, this is the origin right here. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to first learn about some of the tools. Now, the first one we're going to talk about is this one right here. This is called the rectangle tool. So you're going to click on that, and notice how our icon changes to a pencil with a little rectangle next to it. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw a rectangle. Up. And specifically, we're going to have it start at the origin. Now notice, as I get close to certain objects on the screen, my pencil will snap to it. So like if I want to start off the axis here, the red axis, it'll tell me where I'm at. If I get close to the green axis, again, it'll snap to it. Now I want to snap to the origin. So I'm going to go down here, and notice how it actually says origin. So now I can click and hold, drag out a rectangle, and let go. So there's my rectangle. Now, notice down here how the dimensions have appeared. I don't want this just to be a rectangle. I would like this to be a square. So immediately after, without clicking anything else, what I want to do is go directly to my keyboard and type in 100, 100. And what that's going to do is going to give me a 100 by 100 millimeter square. If I hit Enter automatically this changes. Now, if I mess up, let's say I wanted it to be 50 by 50. Again, I just go directly to the keyboard and I redo it. But again, I want 100 to 100, so I'm going to type that in. Now, if I do something else, you can't go back to that. So just make sure that that's what you want. Otherwise, you'll have to undo things and um, redo all that. Okay, but what I've got here is my 100 by 100 square. Okay, and what we're going to do is this is just going to be kind of a, a reference point. It's kind of hard to tell where we are in the screen because, you know, if you pan around, whether I'm zoomed in or zoomed out, it all looks the same. So this is just to kind of give me a frame of reference. 
because it's a design program, it's made so that if I put a second object, all of a sudden those two objects are linked to each other and it, it changes things. So if I start to move things around, they're kind of connected and I don't want that to happen. So what we're going to do here is we're next going to make this so that this square won't glue or connect to some of the other things we're going to do. So the next thing you want to do is you're going to get the select tool. This right here is the select tool, this arrow. Okay, so if I want to select it, I just drag over it, or I could just click it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to edit. Up here is the edit menu. And you're going to go down here to make component, which means that this particular square is going to have certain features. So we're going to make component. Now all this stuff, a lot of information here, but all we really care about is this one, alignment. Glue to none. Some of yours, they might be glued to any, which means it'll start to stick to other things. But if I hit glue to none and then create, watch what happens. If I draw something else now and I try to move things around, one thing won't affect the other. Okay, this component has remained separate from this one. All right, so now, now that that's done, I can move on. So now, here's where we're actually going to do a translation. Translating, once again, is one of our geometric transformations that we're learning about, and we're just going to apply it in this computer-aided drafting design. And what we're going to do is we're going to basically translate or slide another object, and we're going to keep it simple. So I want you to go back to your rectangle tool and go back to the origin, and you're going to make a 25 millimeter by 25 millimeter square. Now, once again, the process is drag it out. Don't worry about it being perfect. Just drag it out any size, and then immediate light immediately type in 25 comma 25 enter and it automatically resizes our square all right now that you've got your smaller 25 by 25 square the next thing we're going to do is an actual translation now here's where it is important that we are still in our top view um, because let me give you an example let's say we were slightly off a little bit or even extremely off if I start to move things around and you won't do this in class, but I want you to see why we're trying to stay in that top view. If I'm in this view, I'm no longer just got the ability to slide it along this gray plane along the ground that I could end up up here, up in the sky. And so in our view, we wouldn't notice. It would look like they're both on the ground. But if we look at this view, we realize that they're not, that we're working in three dimensions now. So this is what we're trying to avoid, and this is why we always stay in the top view, because by staying in the top view, it'll keep everything on the ground. All right, now, for this, what we're gonna use is the Move tool. The Move tool is this one. It looks like a, a compass on a, a map, and your icon should turn to be the same thing. Now, before you do that, though, first thing we wanna do is we're gonna go back to the Select tool, and we're gonna select that small square. Okay, and you can either do it by clicking on it, or you can just uh, click and drag. All right, either way. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Move tool. Notice how my square stays selected. Now, we're going to drag it. But realize that when we drag something, we want to be accurate with it when it comes to translation. So what I want to do is I want the bottom left corner of this small square to touch the top right corner. And so when I go down here and grab it, I'm actually going to grab it specifically by the corner. So when it looks like it's on the corner there, you're gonna click on it. Now, before you move it, what we're also gonna do is we're gonna make a copy. Uh, we'd like to see where it is in relationship to the original when we translate it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold the control button down. So by holding the control button down, it's gonna slide it or translate it, but it's gonna translate a copy. Okay, and now, now that I've grabbed it by the bottom left, what I wanna do is I wanna drag it up here until it snaps with the top right corner of the big square and then I let go. Okay, so once again, oops, select the small square, get the move tool, and make sure you hold down that control button. If you don't hold down the control button, what happens is you're gonna drag the square itself but not end up making a copy of it. And we wanna make a copy, so hold down the control button, grab the bottom left corner, click and hold, drag it, and then let go up here. Okay. All right, so that's it. This is what we wanted to achieve. We just want to create a simple translation so that we can do the harder stuff later on. But these are the basic moves. 
and this is the instructions you'll follow when you do your assignment. All right, so now the next thing we want to do is in order to keep track of our work, what we're going to do is we're going to take screenshots of our work to be looked at later. So what we're going to use for this is we're going to use what's called the freehand tool. Now up here there's a pencil, but when you click on it, it has two functions. Right now it's on line tool function where I click and click and it creates a line segment. I don't want that. What you're going to do is you're going to click this arrow and you'll notice you can switch it. So I'm going to change it to the freehand tool. This is what I really want. I want this squiggly line. And what you're going to do is come over to your screen and let's say this was exercise one. Just It's going to be a little messy, but just do a one. There is a text tool, but it's not quite what you'd expect. So this is going to be a little easier. It'll be a little sloppy, but for our purposes, we don't care. All right, and then next, on your computer, you're going to hold down the Alt key, ALT, and then there should be a button that says Print Screen. And so what it'll do is it'll take a snapshot of your screen and save it to your computer. So let's continue on with a few more uh, translation exercises. This time we're going to do our translation. We're going to slide the object. We're going, we're going to do it mathematically. So once again, I'm going to go through these steps just so that we're, when we get to class, these are familiar. You're going to open up a new file. Now what I did is I went to new and it just opened up a brand new blank canvas, all blank, well, blank except for this pre-made object, which again, select it, delete it. Go to your window menu, model info, decimals, millimeters. Now, these steps that I did in the last exercise, I'm going to go through a little quicker because you've seen it before. And don't forget, all this stuff is written down. We just want you familiar with the program so that things go much smoother in class. All right, next, we want the top view. We want to be looking at it like we're looking out of an airplane down at the ground, so shift two. And then what we're going to do to keep things simple is we're going to start off with those same two squares. So get your rectangle tool, this one here, snap to the origin. You see how it actually says origin. Click, drag, and release. And then immediately after, without doing anything else, type in 100, 100, which should appear in the bottom right of the screen, and hit enter, and it'll automatically resize it to the square you want. All right, now before we do the second square, select this square, go to edit, make component. This is so that nothing else affects this square, that this square remains untouched. So glue to none, create. Now go back to the rectangle tool. Go back to the origin, drag out a rectangle, but then immediately type in 25 comma 25, which should appear in the bottom of the screen. Enter. All right, and this is where everything so far has been the same as the last activity. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to translate this square. We're going to make a copy of it and translate it horizontally, but we're going to do it mathematically this time because sometimes there are situations where maybe I need this square out here at a very specific location, but there's because it's beyond our initial square, there's no reference point to lock it in. So we need to be able to do this mathematically, and you'll see what that looks like on your paper in class as well. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna click the select tool. I'm gonna select that square, and you can either click the square or you can just drag over it and select it that way. It really doesn't matter. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our move tool again. All right, now, Again, I want to be able to see the original square and then a copy of it translated horizontally. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold down the control key and it should make a copy. Now, here's something I want you to notice. Notice how if I drag it just in some random direction, there's a line linking the first one and the second one. I also want you to notice how I just randomly clicked on the square that I didn't specifically pick a corner of the square because we're doing this mathematically and we don't need to worry about that. But also notice that, oops, also notice that if I slide specifically horizontally to the right, how the line that connects them turns red. Okay, that is the computer's way of telling me I'm in a perfectly straight horizontal alignment. If I was a little bit off, it would turn black. Okay, now if we were doing it vertically, it's a little hard to see on your screen, but it turns green. Okay, but I'm going horizontally. Now, I just wanna go far enough where it knows I want to slide to the right and it gives me that little red line. So I'm going to click again. Now, but what I want is I want this square over here. So immediately after, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the mathematical translation by actually typing in 100 millimeters. 
enter. And so what it tells me is that what I'm telling the computer is that to slide the copy exactly 100 millimeters to the right. Okay, and this is really handy when I want to slide something, but again, there's no reference point. So if I needed it further out, let's say 200 millimeters, I'd type in 200. Okay, but for your activity, I want it right there. So 100, and that's how we translate something horizontally. All right. So now this last one, let's assume I've gone through all the ins uh, All right, so now, again, you're going to take a screenshot, and so let's once again go over the steps. You're going to come up here. You're going to make sure that you're not on the pencil tool. You're on the freehand tool. And let's say this was exercise two. You're just going to draw two on your screen. And then what you're going to do is you're going to hold down the Alt key, ALT, and hit print screen. And it should save a copy of this screen to your computer. All right, so let's do one last activity. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to translate vertically. Now, let's assume at this point we understand how to get to this point. You use the rectangle tool to create a square. You made it a component, did the second square. And once again, all these instructions will be written out. So if you do forget, um, you can just look back. But we're just going to start over once again. So I'm in a new file. I'm back to this starting point here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to translate this vertically. So it's kind of the same moves as the horizontal translation. So first off, get your select tool, select the square, I'm going to go to our move tool. And again, you can click, since we're not doing this physically, we're actually doing it mathematically, you can click anywhere on the square. But remember, don't forget to hold down the control key. So you're making a copy of it. Okay, we're going to slide it down. Now, once again, if I slide off in any diagonal direction, notice how the line's black, but if I'm specifically perfectly vertical, the line will turn light green. I know it's a little hard to see on your screen. It almost looks like it disappears, but here's the black line. And then if I'm perfectly vertical, it'll turn green. Click again. Now, I want this in a specific location. And so what I want to do is I want to make it appear right here. In other words, I want to slide it down only 25 millimeters. So Without doing anything else, I'm going to type in 25, which should appear down in the corner of your screen, hit enter, and now my square is specifically 25 millimeters below where it started from. Okay. Once again, to finish up, what you're going to do is you're going to get your freehand tool. You're going to, let's call this activity three, and then you're going to take a screenshot of it by holding down the alt key and then print screen. All right, so those were just three quick exercises showing you some of the commands and menus that we're going to be using to do both physical translations and mathematical translations.